Programmers do kung fu fighting To ride good fast as lightning Hello and be welcome to another Let's Develop Code Cutter. Today I'm going to perform the string calculator cutter and for the first time I'm not going to explain you all of uh, the contents of this cutter or the complete task of this cutter beforehand because uh, this one is really about incremental work and um, I explain you the requirements as I go along. So um, just as a quick side note for starters I'm going to use Java 8 streams for the implementation of the task so in case you guys are not yet familiar with the new stream API that was introduced to uh, Java 8 um, this might be a chance for you to get to know it uh, as I did while performing this cutter for the first time. So for now let's get started uh, as usual by creating a test. This test is going to be called string calculator test and I'm going to place it in com let's developer isn't there a completion here? There's a completion here. Um, cutter and string calculator. Fortunately, I don't have to type the word calculator too many times here because I'm pretty sure sooner or later I misspell it. Anyways, first test. So what's this string calculator about? Um, the general idea is that we uh, have a calculator that gets string as input and um, parses numbers from that string and sums them up. So the first test I'm going to write is sums empty string to zero. So I want to have a string calculator class, which I'm going to quickly create using more unit done. And on that one, I want to call a sum method with the empty string as input. Going to create that one. Um, it's going to return an integer this thing I want to call input and that's about it. No, that's not it yet because I have to give it a default return value. Go back to my test, add a semicolon here so I should be able to execute the test. It's running. Okay, delete that ugly comment here and add a first assertion. Assert that string calculator sum is zero, right? Import the is, of course, and then execute that test. This is going to fail because I scaffolded this method by returning minus one, easy fix, return zero. Okay, go back, next test, um, easy case, sums single, number to itself. Not sure if that's the right way to express this in English, but I guess you get the idea. String calculator sum of, let's say five is five. Execute that, does not work. So we have to implement something. Um, let's say, if input is empty, we return zero, else we return integer parsint of input. Actually, it's even easier right now. It suffices to return five, right? Yes, it does. Um, and to get rid of that problem, I'm going to implement another case here with 42, which fails, of course, because it's returning five. Remember to use 42, 23, 66, 69, 666, and stuff like that in your tests because it makes them more geeky. Um, I usually default to many of those numbers uh, just because I'm not very creative. Okay, so now integer parsint input 
should solve this problem for us. Tests are up and running again. Okay, so next case is that I want to add up multiple numbers that are separated by commas. So I say public void sums to numbers separated by comma. So assert that string calculator sum one comma two is three. Add a semicolon here, execute the test. Test fails because I cannot parse one comma two uh, to an integer. So I have to go in here, actually into that second case. No, not into that second case. I'm going to add another case here. Else if input contains a comma, I'm going to split the input by that comma. And what I get out of here is an array of strings. Uh, yeah, what I get out of here is an array of strings, which I'm going to assign to um, a variable called numbers. And then I'm going to return um, integer parsint of numbers. Actually, again, I'm implementing too much, right? It's sufficient just to return three here. Can even take away this part. I re-execute the tests. That already works. So let's add another test case to get my laziness. Um, out of the implementation code, let's say one plus three is four. Now the test fails again, going back and now I need the code I was about to implement. So split that one and say integer parsint numbers zero plus integer parsint um, numbers one. Right? Yes, that's working. And, and, and I do want to refactor that actually, because, um, I can, th this is a special case of that here where there is just no comma. So I can, if I, in, do input split by comma without the uh, the input containing comma I will get an array with only one element and I want to convert that to an integer. So what I want to do here in fact is convert this array uh, to stream and say yeah should be should be possible just by that. Uh, which will return a stream of object, a uh, stream of string, hopefully, because I mean, there's strings in there. Not string of string, but stream of string. Import that one. Um, actually, the interface. Oh, no, the class, right? The import. That's what I want to have. So I have a stream of strings, which I call numbers. Um, and that stream is created from a string array, which I get by splitting the input by comma. And now I actually want to convert this string, then all the numbers in this string to integers. So I use map to int with integer dot parsint as a parameter. So it's going to apply integer.parsint to all the strings in the stream and map the results to an integer. And as you can see here, the result of this method call is a special class, a special stream class called instream because uh, the primitives 
uh, cannot be used as type parameters, so I cannot create a stream of int. Uh, that's why there's special stream types for uh, integer and I think for double and probably long, um, which are called in stream, long stream, double stream. And on that very thing, I can actually call a method called sum. And I re can return the result of that method call and that should not change anything. Right. And now I can actually get rid of this special case down here, make this an else case. And if I re-execute that, this in fact works, which is quite nice. Um, what does unfortunately not work, I think, is to get rid of this thing here because input split comma with an empty input string will return an array with one empty string as an element. So um, this will unfortunately fail. This should still run, but if I remove that here, I should get an exception in one of the tests saying uh, cannot parse empty string into a number. That's sad, but I don't know a way around it. So in case one of you knows, um, let me know how I can convince this split thing here to return an empty string if I give it an empty string as input or an empty array if I give it an empty string as input. Anyways, um, for now I'm content with the implementation and I can go back and actually think about the next one. Um, what should work already is adding um, more than two numbers, right? Three numbers separated by comma. Assert that string calculator sum of one, two, three is six. We execute that one, already works fine. Programmers do kung fu fighting, to ride good fast as lightning.